Hello everyone, fellow JavaScript programmers. I'm here to tell you today about today uh, the possibilities of creating desktop applications with JavaScript with the use of Electron Framework. Maybe some of you have heard about it, but I guess not. Uh, I'm Rafał Szymański and I work for Mobica right now, previously Accenture and C. Uh, if you want to join our ranks, and work with modern JavaScript, feel free. Uh, we are interested in looking for new people. And Mobica have uh, provided some prizes, I guess. We have free prizes for the best questions related to the presentation. So feel free to ask them at the very end. All right, so let's start. So this is the general idea of the presentation. The outline, at the very end, I will present some code, I hope. All right, so uh, we want to create desktop applications, but what do we mean by desktop? And we can see here that Electrum supports both OS X and Windows and even Linux, even on our ARM, which is very interesting. And uh, Electrum itself, as you can see, in the newest version, incorporates Node, Chromium, and V8. Uh, Chromium and V8 are quite new, and Node is a bit dated, but this is done on purpose uh, because we want to maintain stability. Okay, Electron. Uh, before we start to talk about what Electron is, I'd like to show you some logos of already existing applications. You may know some of them. Uh, interestingly, even Microsoft have created, has created an application based on Electron which is Microsoft VLS Visual Studio Code. You may know this is IDE. And at the very yeah, upper, upper left corner, you can find Atom IDE logo. And Atom is the thing that started the whole Electron idea. Previously, it was named Atom Shell. Now it's Electron. All right. Uh, but Electron is not the only option for creating desktop applications. We also have NWJS, we have Ceph, which stands for Chromium Extend Embedded Framework. And uh, we'll do a quick rundown comparison of Electron and NW. Okay, battery is dead. Right. Quick rundown comparison. All right. Let's take a look. NWJS which is Node WebKit, and Electron, formerly Atom Shell. As you can see in the table, there are quite differences, uh, mainly architectural because, bit, <coughs> sorry, between those two, and uh, the approach is totally different. So Electron is a combination of Node with option to spawn Chromium windows, and NWJS is Chromium with Node bindings inside. So this is quite a different approach. This causes quite a difference in, in creating those applications uh, in NWJS and Electron. As you can see, there are ideas like processes, which are separate in Electron, and contexts, which are less separate in NWJS. And this causes the whole idea to to differ quite a lot. For example, on Windows XP, you cannot create Electron apps. You can create them with NWJS. And unfortunately, the biggest drawback that you have on Electron is that you cannot secure your code. So the code will be available to the end user. Uh, NWJS incorporates VH snapshots. Some of you may know them. I won't be going into details how a snapshot work. So besides this, this comparison, I won't be talking about NWJS anymore. So let's move to the details of Electron. Oh, uh, if there are any questions, please leave them for the end of the presentation. OK, processes. Those are the most important things for Electron. You can see two shapes, green. Well, the shape, green one, OK. The shape doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is an ellipsis, and there are, those are rectangles. Doesn't matter. 
two types of processes, main and a renderer. Main is responsible for everything node related and renderer is related to the window of a Chromium. So, as you can see, like in the browser Chromium, each renderer is separate, like the tabs in the browser. So there is no communication between those renderers, and this causes the need for communication uh, via the main process, via the node process. And you can do it either through the IPC, which is inter-process communication, or with the module remote. So you use RPC, remote procedure call. The main module itself is res responsible for the whole app life cycle. So as long as the main process is working, uh, the app will be running. Unfortunately, no, okay, this is the right one. Okay, the right version. All GUI related elements, which we will discuss in the later part of the presentation, work strictly from the main process. And everything can be debugged easily, just like in Node. You can use Iron Node, you can add switches, uh, debug in debug break, and it will work. And how to start a main process? As you know, every Node-based app has a package JSON file. And in this file, we configure the running environment. And if we have a property named main, and in this property, we point to a single JS file, this particular JS file will be the main process of our application. So this is a different approach than in NWJS. We start with a single JS file that creates and spawns renderers. So this is the single point of our application. And as for the renderer process, it is bound to the browser window that is spawned by the main process. And everything that is rendered in the window is controlled by the renderer. And renderers are separate, are isolated, they can communicate with the main and, <coughs> and they can be debugged with the built-in dev tools, which we have shipped with Chromium. But, very important thing, as you can see on the side, we can create a browser window, but hide it. Uh, so it won't show to the user. That causes uh, the idea that we can create a render process that does the heavy work in the background, then via the IPC returns the result to the main, and this result can be sent to other renderers. So something like web workers. Very similar concept. OK, each type of process has a set of modules, uh, which are either uh, module specific, process specific, or shared. As you can see, uh, main is much richer in modules. It is changing right now. But uh, there are some shared ones, like clipboard or uh, crash reporter, very important module. And render has less modules, but you can extend it via any JS framework, uh, JS application you want. So let's see uh, an example of communication. Here we have a synchronous communication. I know synchronous is a bit dated, but uh, we have a main process started on, at the top, and at the bottom we have a renderer process obviously started, and the renderer sends via sensic method through the IPC renderer module a signal to the main process, and the main process responds by setting the return value, which is then locked out on the console. So we have inter-process communication. Okay. We also have asynchronous communication, which is by default used here. Uh, we just use send, like here in the renderer, and the main is listening on an event async message, and it responds with the uh, event sender. 
so the, the renderer gets the answer. All right, uh, this is a bit, okay, a bit too much code of the of a slide. All right, uh, this is the very basic application. You can see that at the very top on the left, we create uh, modules. We start the electric modules itself. Uh, we start the module app, which is the uh, the lifecycle controller, and then we create a handle to a new browser window, which spawns the renderer. And at the very right side of the site, you can see that we create a browser window with a set height and width, and then we load URL from the file uh, file protocol from the hard drive, and we open DevTools directly to debug the application. I will show code at the very end. All right. Uh, besides going with the communication and just opening browser windows, well, if you ship a browser window to the user and you just open it on the desktop, it's, it doesn't look like a desktop application at all. It looks like a browser with a web page. So, what can we do to achieve a more native look, more native experience? Oh, we have quite an option, a lot of options, I can say. Uh, besides creating uh, menus, notifications, native notifications, icons, progress bars, and whatever, we can even provide automatic updates in the background that are being updated while the user uses the application which is quite useful. I will discuss a few of them right now. So, for example, automated ap application updates are provided by Squirrel. Um, this is a project that combines two big sub-projects, Squirrel Windows and Squirrel Mac, and they both support uh, providing automatic updates, but via a different method. For Mac, you have a server that responds with a JSON with a download link, and for Windows, we have a NuGet-based server, uh, which can be easily set up on a, I guess, S3 bucket on Amazon or whatever. So you have to just set up two servers or um, two services, uh, which will provide all the updates for the user based on their current version. Okay, uh, how to create a menu? A menu can be easily created, and by menu I mean the application menu, not the browser menu, because the browser we will ship with the electron has no uh, address bar, has no search bar, has no menu on itself. The menu is provided by the system. So we want to add elements to these menus, and you can do it easily uh, by providing items or templates uh, the template-based method is even better. So you just create a template, like on the right side. You just uh, provide it as an argument to the function, and you get a working menu. Uh, it is a very interesting thing because it has roles, and roles are um, handles to system-based actions. So you can have a role like copy, paste, undo, redo, whatever. You just state, oh, a new item with action copy you define the, uh, the shortcut, and the system handles everything for you. Okay, let's get back to the next one. All right. Notifications, system-based notifications, so they look native. They are native. They not only look, but they are. What we use here is HTML5-based API. So you can see you create an options object, we provide it as an argument to a new notification in the renderer because we are using HTML5, right? And uh, the main is for node and renderer is for the browser. So in the, in the renderer, we create a new notification and surprise, surprise, we get a system-based notification uh, in Windows, Linux, and OS X. That's kind of cool. We'll see that at the end. Oh, besides that, uh, we can provide recent documents users have been worked with, have been working with. You just add a particular file to the list of recent documents, or just create a whole list with one command. Uh, besides that, we would probably like 
to ship the application to the user easily. We have the updates, we have the native look. Now we have to package it up and provide it to a user. So this is the basic structure of the project. We have a directory with three files, although we could go with two. Uh, all we need is package JSON and main.js. Uh, but if you want to spawn a renderer and provide the content, you will need some index HTML5 page, whatever, uh, and HTML document will be fine. So you just create a folder, put those files. In package.json, you state that the main.js is the main process file, and you're ready to go. All you need to do is add electron executable that you have already downloaded with npm. Uh, you just rename the electron executable, and you're done. Or you could pack the whole application in an archive. Uh, I guess you're probably not familiar with Azure archives. This is like tar, very similar. It just wraps around all this uh, contents in a easy, accessible way. Um, unfortunately, there is no encryption and there is no password. So still, the code is not secure. It's just wrapped up in an archive. And this archive can be easily supported by your application because uh, Electron creators have modified the, the FS module, which you can see in the top, to support Azure archives as directories. So you just mount a file from a virtual directory like it would be read from the disk. And if you want to do any, any command, any application on working on archives itself, you have to use FS original module, which is the original mode module node module for operations on files. So you can just mount an archive as a virtual directory. All right, so this is, this is a bit tricky, uh, too tedious. We are lazy, we like to do, uh, we like to use automatic tools. Here you are, Electron Packager. We just provide the directory, the platform via an option, uh, maybe an icon for the application go with the command and everything is done automatically. At the very bottom you can see that we can even state an older version of Electron if you want to contain uh, some functionalities that have been removed in the newer one. And you just set the directory on the output, choose an icon and state all platforms in here. And even on Linux you get a Windows version, a Mac version and a Linux version itself. Then the Mac version can be signed with your uh, Apple developer certificate and shipped to the Mac store, which is nice, quite nice. All right, uh, but besides that, maybe you have a web page you would like to ship as a desktop application. No problem. There is a Nativifier application. Just provide the web, web address, like in the bottom, the name of the app, and the Nativifier will do everything for you. It will even pull the FF icon as the uh, application icon. You will see uh, I have created a Meetup application. Oh, I don't know if there is connectivity here. We'll see. Uh, it works fine. Even it, it persists sessions and whatever you want. So you just wrap up this whole web page in a desktop application and ship it to a user. All right, uh, maybe, maybe you'd like to create an autom al almost automated project with automated updates, uh, server, whatever you want. This is a very complex tool called Electron Accelerator. It creates packages, it sets up servers for up automatic updates, and uh, creates a set of scripts that will control all the lifecycle of the application. Unfortunately, uh, this project is a bit dated and is using old Electron, but there are forks that uh, remove this uh, old version of this, of this application and you can use a new one. Uh, this is quite an easy tool to use. All right, so what else do we have? All right, so it's time for the code. So let's see a working app. Let's start with a very simple basic app. We just create a an Electron module, 
load it up via require, create an app, app on ready, let's log to console that it's working. So we spawn the more the main process here. We do nothing else. And in package JSON, we start uh, we start here with main.js and electron dot to work with the application. All right, so let's see it in, in, in action. Doesn't matter. I will. I will do it like like this. Okay. npm start. As we can see, it's defined as electron in this directory, and we should see in the console this information from the. Oh yes, electron is starting. Yeah, electron app is ready. So that means that the main process is working. All right, let's kill it. Uh, second, more complex one. Now we'll create a browser window. That means we will spawn the renderer process. And we'll like to uh, create a window with eight 800 pixels and 600 pixels of dimensions. And we'll load index HTML and index HTML says hello. All right. All right, then. We don't want this. We want to change directory. And let's start like this. OK. Oh, we are spawning the, the browser window. And it loaded the file from the hard drive. That's quite nice. As you can see, there is no search bar. There is no address bar. There are no options here. Uh, the menu here is created via Electron. And all the options here are defined by our application. We can toggle developer tools in the application to debug it easily. You can do whatever you want with the menu, and we will see it in the next code presentation. We create a menu from a template, and the template is quite complex. We add a lot of options like toggle developer tools, toggle full screen, reload the page, whatever. All right, so a quick rundown. All right, so we'll create the very same window. But now we have added reload. That's nice. And some other functionalities. And it just reloads the file from the hard drive. So we can control the whole menu. But now let's, let's do something more complex. We will start with this window. We don't have the menu here. But here in the index HTML, we start with a JavaScript. Oh, that's interesting. And we create a notification via HTML5 API. Let's see how it will look. You probably know how the desktop, uh, the desktop application notification look on Ubuntu. Some of you may know. And we want to get this look in here. OK. NPMs. Oh, OK. We can just go like this. OK. Oh, we have a notification. Looks like native, because it is. And the best thing is uh, that I have wrapped up Mozilla Developer, developer Network page <laughs> with Nativifier. Kind of lazy method, but it works. And let's see what can we achieve. All right. Uh, Oh, MDN, all right. So, uh, Nativifier created a Linux-based x64 version of the Mozilla Developer Network page. If we list the contents, you can see that there is an MDN application. So, let's start it. All I did was provide the MDN network address to the Nativifier, and here we go. It may require web. No, no. All the contents are static. All right. So this is the documentation of the notification API. And it has an example, a working example. All you have to do is push the button. 
the question is where is the button? Okay, it should be somewhere here. It was supposed to be here, but I guess lack of internet is showing some issues here. Okay, uh, I will try to connect later. Uh, what it what it's supposed to do is to convert native uh, into is to convert uh, web notifications to web. So if you if you wrap up the web with Netlify. All the native API based notifications will be converted to system ones. So you can create uh, almost just a publication from your web page easily. But now, uh, let's take a look at something, something more <coughs> complex. Okay, the, let's start with this. This is interesting. Bit dated version because Electron, electron Accelerator is bit dated. But it should show the idea behind it. All right. Uh, NPM start. Okay, so we have an application with Node 4.1 and old Chrome, old uh, Electron here, because it was generated via the Electron Accelerator. And all you have is a set of scripts defined in the package JSON, which is the most important thing here. You have a set of scripts, you have keywords, and uh, you can create automatically the update server from this very script. You can create all you want uh, from the Electron. And I guess I have two minutes, so are there any questions? The prizes are waiting. Uh, hi, and thanks for a great presentation. Uh, the operating system integrations uh, look great, but uh, are there any you ever felt were missing? Uh, can you repeat the question? Are there any operating system integrations you ever felt were missing? Well, uh, unfortunately not yet, uh, but they are still adding some additional stuff. So. Uh, I guess I haven't used it that extensively to find any missing integration, but I guess users will find it quite quickly. So no, for, for me right now, there was no, nothing missing here. All right, because they really do look solid at the moment. So thanks. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, hi. Uh, can you access the file system easily in that Electron app and be able to do it uh, in a cross-platform? Cross uh, I mean that could you write the same code and run it and operate on file system both on Linux, Mac and Windows? Yeah, precisely, because you use the FS module from Node and you probably know from the Node it works on all systems. Uh, it is bit modified during the package wrap-up, so uh, the FS module itself is modified by Electron devs, so it supports all systems without any problem. Uh, and uh, you can check that even because uh, they are working right now with Apple to get a certification for the Mac Store, so it's supported uh, quite widely. So the yeah, file system is uh, accessible quite easily. You can also use jQuery like methods like get to get the file from the hard drive, but this is a bit more complex. And you just use the FS module from Node, load the file, and pass it to the renderer. It works fine.